Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of What in the World is Going On with Rob Carson. That's me. Stick around if you want to be entertained. Hello and welcome to the show. Uh, we are live on Facebook, of course, and uh, soon to be on a lot of other uh, networks. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Rob Carson, in case you didn't know. Um, we are officially broadcasting live. And, uh, and I've got some good stories tonight. This is not necessarily all politics, because I'm going to tell you what I do. I do, uh, I do politics. I'm a political satirist. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know me, I wrote uh, a good share of the comedy that Rush Limbaugh run, uh, uh, ran on his show for decades. And so I wrote a political satire for him and other people and other people, okay? So I made fun of everybody, made fun of everybody. Anyway, welcome to the show. If you would please tray, uh, share with other people, I would greatly appreciate it. I noticed that Mary Walter was listening a few minutes ago or watching a few minutes ago. Uh, Mary, if you are watching, I really enjoy what you guys are doing at WMAL. I think you guys are doing a terrific job at that radio station, and, uh, and Bill Hess should be proud. I really enjoyed the time that I spent on uh, WMAL. So... We got some stuff we're going to talk about tonight, including a $6,500 Christmas tree. Can you imagine having that kind of money? <laughs> oh, we're going to get into that. Um, oh, Whoopi Goldberg. Silence is Meghan McCain on the Harpies from Hell show. I mean, the, uh, the View. Uh, we'll get into that very shortly. The latest target of, uh, of anti-gun people is, uh, and, and people just don't want to have fun at all, is, uh, is Nerf guns. Nerf guns apparently are weapons of mass destruction to some people. So we're going to share that here very shortly. They're taking some. Congress is going to ban sale of tobacco to anyone under 21. Netflix under fire for depicting Jesus is gay. <clears throat> and a laughing pit bull. All of that tonight on the show. All right. Let's see who's watching, shall we? And if you would, as I as we progress here, please share with other people as we grow the audience. As we grow the audience. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Do you have Christmas tree syndrome? Christmas tree syndrome is real, all right? This apparently is a, um, it's a, it's an allergic reaction. This is a woman from Sydney, Australia, who had always had the, uh, the fake Christmas tree, Nikki Waldegrave, and she ended up with a very painful skin rash after helping strap her family's first natural Christmas tree to the roof of their car last year. And apparently this happens a lot. People need to be aware of the risk because uh, Christmas is not so merry if you have a tree allergy. See what they, they did there? Symptoms include hives, rashes, uh, rashes, wheezing, coughing, among other things, sore eyes, potentially serious asthma attack. Waldegrave, this woman here, uh, she said that uh, she was left with bleeding blisters on her arms and hands after handling the pine that she purchased at a supermarket. One of the worst things she ever experienced was a seven-foot fur. Her son and her husband went and got it. Her arm started uh, itching. She was covered uh, from head to toe with angry welts. She tried a cold shower, moisturizer, and a histamine. Nothing seemed to help. Went to the hospital. The uh, reaction uh, started to change. Uh, apparently, antidotes include antihistamines such as Benadryl, or Zyrtec, and topical steroids like hydrocortisone. So it's, it's a real thing. Christmas tree syndrome. All right. I'm going to crank up my volume here, make sure that we are heard, and we should be. Okay. Let's move on. So um, do you have an extra $6,500 around, lying around? What did you spend on your, uh, your Christmas tree this year? What did you spend on your Christmas tree this year? My wife and I, uh, a couple of years ago, we bought, um, and it was part of out of, uh, out of need, um, <clears throat> we bought a Big Lots Christmas tree for like 30 bucks. <laughs> so we went to Big Lots, and we... Uh, and we got a tree that was about 30 bucks. And we still have the tree because it's kind of uh, reminds us of times where we had less. And my wife does a beautiful job decorating, so it looks really amazing. Christmas trees in uh, Soho in uh, New York City going for up to $6,500. Here's one of them. That's a 20-foot tree. All right? 20-foot tree. Manhattan vendor Soho trees slinging what seems to be the city's most expensive tannin bomb, sixty five hundred dollars. But don't worry, they'll deliver it and set it up for you. Okay, delivery and installation are included. Soho uh, the trees lot at the corner of Varick and Canal Streets. 
So apparently, a three hundred twenty-five foot, uh, three hundred twenty-five dollars per foot, and apparently they're sold out. They are completely sold out. They have plenty of these trees. I'm expanding there. I'm looking for your comments. Um, oh, hello. We've got Alan and Greg. Greg Ring and uh, and Neola. Woohoo! And uh, Robin Blankenship. Boardman. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Alan. Yeah, all right. They're sold out. Now, apparently, a few blocks east, you only pay uh, $2,000 for a 20-footer. Footer. East Village's Tree Riders, New York City. Apparently, there's a, a shortage uh, of Fraser firs this year. During the economic crash of 2008, farmers in North Carolina, Smoky and Blue Ridge Mountains planted fewer Frasers. I just think, honestly, it's a waste. Buying a tree, growing a tree for years, cutting it off, sitting it in your living room. I just think it's terribly, 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 terribly wasteful. I don't, I don't like it. I like a real tree. Don't get me wrong. I think they're glorious. I am not trying to be some sort of a uh, uh, of a Grinch with regard to the uh, the tree. I just think it's a horrible, horrible waste. Why? If you could buy a living tree, all right, buy a tree that has the ball and the dirt and all that stuff, and and plant the tree. Yes, yes. Are are uh, artificial trees the most environmentally sound? No, but you use them for years. You use them for years, and, and, and then we get these massive amounts of Christmas trees going into landfills. In some areas, they'll dump them in a lake because apparently they're, they're, they're fish habitats. But I just think that, that the whole Christmas tree thing is kind of a, a sad waste, particularly when you're $6,500 for a 20-foot tree in New York City, and the tree's been alive for a decade, and you just cut it off, just kill it, you know. I'm not trying to sound all, uh, you know, sensitive and everything, but... $6,500 for a tree? And you ought to be able to replant that tree, you know? I don't know. Anyway, there are a lot of people in New York with a lot of money. Uh, apparently, vendor Heather Neville, who bills herself as the uh, New York City tree lady, upped her Fraser prices by 20% to $850. The price reaches $1,300 once delivery, installation, stand, and tip are included. And tip. I would hate to live in New York City. Apparently, big box stores like Home Depot are driving up prices uh, as they buy out uh, uh, Frasers in bulk. So, there you go, guys. $6,400 for a stupid tree. No, no, no. Did you ever watch the Harpies from Hell? I mean, the, uh, <clears throat> the View? Did you ever watch that show? I can't watch it. I don't know what it is about the show. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, I just, I, I don't know. Um, I always thought she was funny, but on this show, I just think she's a bully. Don't particularly like watching her. Uh, Megan McCain is, is outnumbered by people who are from the, the left side of the political equation, and she sits there and she has to endure it, and other people on the show have had to do things as well. They've had to endure a lot of stuff. And apparently, um, <clears throat> Whoopi Goldberg shut down Megan McCain on The View and then she refused to speak the rest of the show. <clears throat> is this is this is this a guy thing, girl thing kind of thing? Because guys, generally, we have these little tiffs. Like I was at work the other day, and a guy named Randall really pissed me off. And we were like f and f and f and f and f and, f and, and I was like, well, I'm gonna get into it. But we get past it in a, in a hurry. But not on the view, apparently. Not on the view. And, and I feel sorry for Megan McCain because she pretty much gets beaten up every day on the show. Uh, Elizabeth ha Hasselbeck was on the show before, and she would leave crying frequently. And I, I, you know, it's no fun when you are outnumbered by people four to one with regard to political ideology who just want to shut you down. And I'll just tell you, I'm a libertarian-leading conservative. And I've had that happen before. Hello, Lena. Marlena, what's up? How are you? Slow day at work today, but... By God, we're back tomorrow. So here's Whoopi, Whoopi, shutting down Megan and Megan saying, I'm not going to talk anymore. All right? On I the view. I don't understand that. My job here is not to litigate the ethics of it. I'm an ABC political analyst along with being a view co-host. My job is to analyze the politics of it. And I'm telling you, the but politics I'm talking about, of it. I'm talking about, I'm about the people that are senators that are shutting the talk. Oh, I can't stand that. Talking over each other, I just 
in the Senate. So here's, here's what's happening now. We're gonna, we're gonna show up. Girl, please stop talking. Please stop talking right now. Because you know what? No what's problem. happening. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. Thank you. I won't talk to the show. But okay. And so I'm okay with that. Of course you're you're okay with that uh, because you want to shut up. You don't want anybody who disagrees with you. That's 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 Whoopi Goldberg. And dear God, what's up with her hair? I'm okay with that. If you're going to behave like this, I'm not behaving like you are. are you and Sean can already have respect. Yes, we are not saying that. that. But, but you are, but what, what you're doing no, I'm not is your fault. We're not doing anything. How about this? Former FBI, we'll be right back. Okay, so they just they just go ahead and, uh, you know, just take her off the show. Just, just pitch to a commercial. I don't know, guys. I, I don't. Uh, I like having a discourse. Okay, I like having a discourse. But there are some people who just won't allow you to talk. Just won't allow you to talk. I can't. I can't. Watch. Can you watch that show? Most people, I don't think, have the time to watch the show in real time. I don't. It runs on ABC. What time does it run? I have no idea. I really don't have any idea what time it runs. Do you have any idea what time it runs? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I just can't watch the show. Did you know that? Uh, did you know that? Uh, hello, that was an interesting sound. Um, did you know that uh, Joy Behar is seventy-seven years old? This, this really? No, this can't be true. It says here that uh, uh, Behar is seventy-seven. She's not seventy-seven years old. Poppy Goldberg is sixty-four. Uh, the other uh, what? What? Uh, uh, Abby Huntsman is on there. Sunny Hostin. I don't know who she is. She's fifty-one years old. Um, I just, I, who watches these shows in real time? I don't know what sort of, uh, I don't know what sort of time you have to watch television in real time. Generally, what do you watch in real time? I, I don't watch any network shows in real time. Do you? I mean, I watch, uh, Netflix and Amazon prime and we got a bunch of different things. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't, do you, do you sit down and you say tonight's the night? It's whatever at seven o'clock on CBS. Do you do that? Who does that? Who who does that? Obviously, some people do. You know, I've got the uh, the uh, what was the uh, unmasked singer, whatever that stupid show was. So maybe some people do uh, tune in for that stuff. I just don't have the time for it. I I don't have the attention span for it. Um, it's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be when I when I was a kid. There was must must see TV. There was must see TV, and. I just don't see that anymore. I don't, I don't know. My wife and I, we watch um, HGTV a lot, okay? When we have time to watch HGTV, we'll sit and watch HGTV together. And we'll watch something on Netflix, but generally we don't agree on what we want to watch. <laughs> anyway. So, let me ask you this. Boys and girls are different. Regardless of, of what uh, people have tried to foist upon the American public, boys and girls are different. There's a reason why toy stores sell toy guns to boys and dolls to girls. They don't do it because they're trying to be sexist. They don't do it. They spend millions of dollars in R&D. Millions and millions and millions of dollars in R&D, and they ask children, what do you like? And that's the way it is. Girls want the Barbie dream house. Boys want Nerf guns. It's just the way it is. Are there places to cross the stream? Sure. Uh, if my daughter wanted a Nerf gun, sure. If my son really wanted to play with a dollhouse, I don't care. I played, I played with my, my sister's dollhouse. So you know what? Yeah. Pretend, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, let's dress up. It was more like, all right, let's blow it up with firecrackers. You know that kind of thing. So uh, I, I just I get tired of this 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 controversy about um, uh, boys being marketed guns, and it's not it's what boys want. That said, here is the uh, the latest attack. Apparently, the latest offense. Somebody is very mad. There are some people who are very mad about the new Nerf gun. There it is, the Ultimate 120. And I'm going to tell you, when my son was growing up, I bought him every Nerf gun, the biggest ones possible. I bought one that looked like a sniper rifle. You know why? Because I wanted to play with it too. Hell yeah. It's cool. 
So now they have this 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 uh, this gun with a magazine fires 120 feet, and it's soft Nerf guns. Okay, you're not going to get hurt. You're not going to poke an eye out. Everything's going to be fine. Consumer group has called the uh, uh, called on the toy brand Nerf to stop selling assault weapons toys to children, saying the company is contributing to a culture in which kids are afraid of mass shootings occurring at their schools. The group, the Empire State Consumer Project, wrote a letter to the board of Hasbro, the company that produces the Nerf toys, questioning the reasons such toy guns are so heavily marketed. You know why? Because they had boys in the marketing research uh, studies, and they said they really want this. And so they started making a lot of them. They don't create, Nerf doesn't go, you know, hey, Let's promote assault weapons and run lots of commercials to get those boys to be convinced to do it. No, they do a lot of research. The Empire State Consumer Project, when your products themselves violate uh, most of your proclaimed corporate values, something is very wrong. How does promoting play with huge automatic weapons create joy, creativity, and connection around the world and across generations and make the world a better place for children? It's a toy. How do these weapons, uh, how do these weapons produce uh, products use your business as a force for good? Uh, business is not a force for good. The business is a force for making money. Who could this child be shooting with his cash of assault weapons? <laughs> wow. Wow. Hi, Greg. Greg, how are you? Glad to see you tonight. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. In lovely Neola, Iowa. The letter sings out a, singles out a Walmart commercial that features uh, family members purchasing the progressively larger Nerf guns for a child, culminating in the gifting of a Nerf Ultra One toy gun that holds 25 foam, uh, foam darts. They're going to have like some sort of uh, national uh, what? Uh, you can only have so many clips in your Nerf gun <laughs> or so many, so many Nerf uh, uh, bullets or darts. <laughs> oh, man. As we watch holiday toy commercials, we see the Nerf Ultra One and other extreme Nerf machine guns for children and are reminded of mass shootings that have devastated American children and families for decades. No, not at all. It doesn't remind me of mass shootings. It's just really cool. See, I'm not so separated from, from uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big kid, right? And I think this would be cool. I think it'd be really freaking cool. In these times, the TV ad for this product plays like a Saturday Night Live parody, except for it's not funny. You know, these people uh, are so anal retentive, you couldn't pull a needle out of their butts with a tractor. It's a matter of this being a very vulnerable consumer group. Children buy what they see, and we're not sure this is driven by market demand for assault weapon toys by children or the industry creating the demand. The industry does not create the demand the industry does not create the demand. They don't go in and rub their fingers and go, oh, we're going to sell guns to toys or to kids because, man, we want to, you know, disregard any feeling about uh, uh, mass shootings. They do focus work. Did you, see, did you see Big? Did you see Tom Hanks in there? Why doesn't this building that converts into a robot work? And it's not fun. You know, they do. This is for real. This is for real. Here's what I have to say. Just lighten the hell up. Okay? Just lighten the hell up. I mean, we don't really give BB guns anymore for gifts. I mean, there are their dads and sons, and they responsibly have BB guns, and they go out and they, and they play with the BB guns and all that. But, you know, most people don't give their kids BB guns anymore. It's a Nerf gun. It's fun to play with. Do I need to explain this to people? Do I need to explain that why Nerf guns are fun to play with? They're just freaking fun. I had an Airsoft rifle that I didn't tell my wife about that I bought and it, it shoots plastic BBs. I think it's like 150 feet per second. And uh, it was a, it was a fully automatic experience. You could do a, uh, a fully automatic or just a, you know, single shot. And it was a blast. Was I fantasizing about killing people? No, I was shooting cans on the, on the fence in the backyard of our house. It was fun. We just like firing projectiles. It's fun. Hello, Jack. Hello, John. Hello, Greg. Glad to have you guys here with me tonight. Next story. 
I never smoked. I did a little bit in college. Uh, you know, when I'd go out with friends, I'd have a cigarette. What's so stupid? What the hell? Really? Uh, I don't know why that was. And it, it lasted very a very short time. I literally went to a bar maybe three times and smoked a cigarette. I, I, I didn't particularly enjoy the experience, and I thought it was kind of stupid. My family, uh, uh, you know, history of smoking in my family. Uh, my father died of smoke-related illness. Um, <laughs> Jack says, cans and bottles. Fun. Oh, my God. You got to get an airsoft rifle. Fully automatic. M4. Looks like a uh, looks like a complete uh, weapon of war and is so fun to play with. Oh, my God. Anyway, back to smoking. And vaping, by the way, and and this is another talk you may have to have with your children is the vaping talk. You know, um, my kids don't smoke. My kids don't vape. Uh, Vaping, uh, now new studies are showing it's really bad for you. The only reason I think vaping should be there is if you're trying to quit smoking. Uh, Vaping can absolutely change your life because it has the oral, oral fixation and the nicotine and all of that. If my dad would have had it, I think he would have. I would think he would have been able to quit smoking, but he didn't, and he died in 1994. Congress says set to uh, ban the sale of tobacco to people under 21 as part of its year-end spending agreement. The ban, which is not yet set in stone, will raise the federal age cap on cigarettes and e-cigarettes. Dick Durbin, Mitt Romney, Tim Kaine, Brian Schatz, Todd Young have openly supported the measure. Mitch McConnell, who has long viewed raising the tobacco age as a priority, is also fully behind it. Uh, expected to be unveiled. You know, here's the deal. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and say this. If you're old enough to fight and die for your country, you should be able to have a drink. You should be able to have a smoke. And if you are that ardently against tobacco, make it illegal. Now, of course, I say that. Uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because the government relies so heavily on tobacco taxes, they're not going to do anything about it. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, Hello, uh, oh, Brian Kaplan. Hello. And Natasha, Natasha, how are you? At a minimum, if you are enrolled in the military, you should get a special ID where you can buy booze and cigarettes. How's that? And for those who aren't serving, no. You got to wait to 21. I don't know if you if you if you are have if you are able to enjoy because of your age all of the privileges associated with being an American citizen, which includes voting, okay, which includes driving, which includes uh, being drafted and going to war and dying for your country. You should enjoy all of its freedoms. There there should be no line in the sand with regard to booze and cigarettes. If it's going to be legal. You're going to be 18 years old. You are an adult. Why Why 21? Why 21? When I was 18 years old, a senior in high school, and I could buy beer. I could buy beer. I could buy booze. In Iowa, I was 18 years old. Did I abuse that privilege? No, not at all. No, no, no. I had friends ask me all the time, buy some booze for us. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So, I don't know. I just, I think if, yeah, I've made my point. I've made my point. So, there's a uh, new <clears throat> Netflix show the first temptation of christ a brazilian comedy streaming on netflix depicts jesus as uh, closeted and gay there are some really ticked off uh, christians apparently this uh, movie depicts jesus paying a visit along with his uh, close bud named orlando to parents mary and joseph for the savior's 30th birthday nearly 1.8 million people have signed a change.org petition for removal of the video here's a little uh, yeah there's there's gay jesus there's gay jesus <clears throat> hi dave campell welcome to the show how's things in chicago my brother it's a 46 minute satire and uh Apparently, they throw a surprise party. He brings his his boyfriend. Okay. The film has drawn criticism from Eduardo Bolsonaro, the son of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. We're in favor of free speech, but is is it worth attacking the faith of 86% of the population? 
Bishop uh, Joseph Strickland of the Diocese of Tyler, Texas, also said he had canceled the streaming service, tweeting, blasphemers don't deserve a penny of support. Other protested, uh, protesters noted the extremely offensive content and suggested that Netflix has crossed the line. Does everybody have to be gay? I mean, I, I, I got gay friends. I've officiated a gay wedding reception. I've been to a gun, couple gay weddings. I don't care. But, you know, there are a lot of people who this, this guy right here this is a big deal. I mean, he died for our sins. Christians believe that. That's what Christmas is all about. Greg Wanstetter. Juan Schneider, I'm sorry. I uh, can't hardly see it. The print's small. But anyway, um, we, 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 we take it kind of seriously. And, and the thing is, there are other religions. If you did this, you, you know, the, the creators of the series would be killed. We at Christians, we don't do that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, really, do we have to make... Jesus gay. I mean, we don't, I don't, I don't care if you're gay, be gay, be gay. I love you. Uh, I, I always said, uh, oh, and hello, Kelly. Nice to see you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, I just, I just have a problem with everybody being gay and, and uh, Jesus has to be gay now. And you know, I just, Jesus to me was, Non-sexual being, I'm just a. Do do I believe everything about Jesus? No, no, but I just he's he's sacred. He's a he's a uh, symbol of pure love. Non-sexual, pure love, healing, you know. So I don't know. I'm not into uh, to censoring things, but at the same time, this I don't think this is going. You know, this is not a good taste. And um, if I were a, uh, a Netflix member and, and this was on the streaming service, I haven't seen it. You know, if you want to quit the service, go for it. I, I'm not going to quit the service because I like the service. But I'm not going to watch this. I, I don't care to watch it. Dave Campbell, Merry Christmas, my friend, and a Happy New Year. Mm-hmm. I've got a really funny story before we go that's uh, really, really cute. Um, and, and what I've been trying to do the last few shows here is do a non-political show. Okay. Before I do that, I want to mention this place right here. Uh, Hendrick Toyota, uh, Hendrick Automotive is a, is a terrific automotive group. Uh, Mr. Hendrick has uh, 118, I think, stores. And, and the car buying process has changed over the years. You can't be a shyster. Now, you can if you're like one of these little mom and pop uh, buy here, pay here places. But the Hendrick uh, name means a lot when you're purchasing a car. And, and the cool thing about Hendrick Toyota in Merriam, Kansas, which is where I work part time uh, while doing podcasting, is uh, the buying experience is extraordinary. Uh, when you buy a, a certified pre owned Toyota, you get a one year bumper to bumper warranty, one year roadside assistance, seven years, 100,000 miles on the engine and powertrain from today. So if you have 2017, the warranty is good to 2024 and up to $100,000 the on the uh, odometer. This is unbelievable. New car, three years, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper, two years roadside assistance, two years, 25,000 miles, uh, regular maintenance that includes oil changes, tire rotations, and alignments, and a lifetime powertrain warranty. All of the major components of the engine and powertrain covered for as long as you own the car. So if your car has a transmission go out at 200,000 miles, you pay $100 deductible, Hendrick picks up the rest. Could you imagine having a car for 20 years with that? And why wouldn't you? Because Toyotas kick butt. Toyotas kick butt. I think they're the best cars on the road right now. I know. I speak from experience. They're glorious, glorious cars. Hendrick Toyota... I-35, 67th Street, exit, Merriam, Kansas. Come by and ask for me when I'm there. I'll sell you a car. This is good news. Hello, Matt. Yes, and you get lifetime uh, popcorn and water. Yes, you do. Thank you. <laughs> from the dealership. Uh, eating chili peppers four times a week could cut your risk from dying of a heart attack. I eat peppers every friggin' day of my life. 
Researchers tracked 23,000 volunteers for eight years, regularly quizzing them about their diet. Research showed that those who ate chili peppers frequently deemed four times each week were less likely to die prematurely. This is great news. And I would assume there's probably something uh, positive about colon cancer involved there, too, if you know what I mean. Capsation is an anti-inflammatory compound, and the substances that create the burning sensation is thought to uh, be behind the benefits. So this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting stuff. I, I like my peppers. You know, if you if you watch my uh, Facebook page, I pickle peppers all the time. I pickled peppers the other night. They're glorious. They're wonderful. I'm getting ready to sell them. They're called Carson's Hotties. And uh, and I just think they're they're terrific. So uh, I enjoy them thoroughly. And uh, and they're good. And not just the heat. I mean, I like some heat. I don't like it so painfully awful that it's miserable a miserable experience. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that with regard to uh, chili peppers. Uh, you don't need them that hot, but I'm going to tell you, they're just, they're good. I, I love them. I love the burn. I love, but not so much. I mean, it's, in, you get the, the and you're, you literally, you can have tears coming from your eyes. Not, not like painful, like I'm agonizing. I can't swallow, but just enough to burn and give you a little bit, you know, I'm talking about a little nose run kind of thing. I love that. I think it's great. I think it's great. Okay. Before I go. And I want to thank you for joining me tonight, guys. I hope you've kind of enjoyed just some of the stuff I've shared tonight. If you get a chance to check out my YouTube cha- page at Rob Carson Show, Rob Carson Show, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Greg says he loves the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> yeah, well, the band is good too, you know. Uh, but before I go, I, I just I want to share a, a funny video that I saw, and, and I just we've got three dogs, and I love dogs. Dogs are a gift from God. They're absolutely glorious beasts. And uh, this is a funny story that just has gone viral. This is a woman tickling her pit bull. And uh, I just think it is, this This shows, and listen, cat owners, that's fine. I, I'm just not a cat guy because cats don't do this, all right? Uh, this is this is the ticklish pit bull. I want to share this with you. And and by the way, don't, don't give pets for Christmas. Don't give pets. Uh, give uh, you know do a pet when you when you have a need and you have a desire and you have a want and you have a place in your heart for a pet don't just buy a pet for a kid for christmas it's not a good deal and don't buy a dog there are plenty of organizations spca humane society around the country they have plenty of dogs and you don't want honestly got to tell you you don't want a full bred uh, dog because they are being we're breeding monsters uh, right now English bulldogs uh, la- live about seven years we had a golden retriever I think she lived to be seven and a half or eight years old she was so sick her entire life it was terrible because they've so inbred these dogs get a mutt get a mutt and also I want to mention that unfortunately in uh, humane societies and SPCAs around the country the number one dog right now it's there they're pit bulls because idiots breed them to fight, to be macho, and they give them up. Well, here's the lovable, tickled pit bull. Enjoy. <laughs> There's a kiss. It's a kiss. That's just playful. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Jay Farm, uh, Jeremy Farmer has joined me. Hello, my friend. Uh, thoughts and prayers with you and your family this uh, this Christmas season. It's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I know you guys have been going through some stuff, but I wish you all the best, all the best. Uh, time for me to go. I think uh, we're done. I think we're done here for tonight. Um <clears throat> Make sure to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel at Rob Carson Show. Uh, a couple of things. We are getting ready to launch my national food show on Envision Radio Networks. It's called Sound Bites with Rob Carson. It'll include a, a major digital um, a major digital uh, platform with cooking videos, uh, daily vignettes. It'll be featured on radio stations around the country. So that's pretty exciting. And then also I've got a, a visit with another podcast network on my What in the World is Going On with Rob Carson podcast, which of course is about current events and uh, politics, pop culture, and comedy. So in the meantime, um, God bless you guys. Have a glorious evening. I hope that your holiday season is going very well, and I will see you again very soon. See ya. 